Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm taking out a 100 amp automatic transfer switch and putting in a 200 amp automatic transfer switch and also upgrading the electrical service to 200 amps. We're getting rid of that transfer switch, that 100 amp meter. We get rid of this nipple in between. This is our supply from JCPNL. It's a two inch underground service and goes up this pole over here. And then about 200 feet down that way is the transformer. Anyway, what I wanna do today is I wanna drill beneath this gas pipe right here. So I get my two inch conduit that will eventually come over to my automatic transfer switch, transferring on the new 200 amp main lug only panel we'll be putting in the basement. Down here in the basement, we've done a lot of work already, including these lights. It's just temporary, okay? This is where the existing, or the original 19, the original 1920 service was here. That's definitely not the original panel. That was probably upgraded in the 70s or 80s. And what they did was they eventually moved all the circuits out of here and brought them through on this feeder to a sub panel that used to be in a hallway, but now it's in the kitchen. And one of the first things we're gonna do today is change that panel cover because it's covered with paint and there's less circuits in it now. We're just straightening it out and making it look like new. So let's go upstairs and take a look. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but this house is over 100 years old. Uh, it sits on a no outlet type of street in Oceanport, and the backyard is the Shrewsbury River. It's a beautiful backyard. We've been working on this project for a few months now. We um, There's a new kitchen renovation. Obviously, we're upgrading the service. There's already a standby generator on site that's a 14 kilowatt connected to a 100 amp uh, automatic transfer switch. We're going to be upgrading that to a 200 amp automatic transfer switch. This is the existing circuits from the original house that was relocated from the basement up into the kitchen. This used to be a hallway. So I said, how am I supposed to leave an electrical panel in the kitchen? But I called the building department. I spoke with the electrical official, uh, the subcode official there. And um, under the rehab subcode in New Jersey, I'm leaving this panel in the kitchen. Uh, it's not near any water. It's on the other side of the room from where the sink is. And so we're good to go. We had our rough inspection. We passed no problem. And uh, we'll be coming up to a final inspection before long. It may seem silly to be vacuuming a panel, but why leave debris in there? I thought I put a, uh, the panel cover was on, then it was off, and so the dust that got in there, I always like to cover that up. I never like to leave a panel open when I'm not there, if I can help it. Uh, but when I came back, obviously, there was a panel on there, but there was still dust inside that panel cover. And I get it, because I gotta put the sheetrock um, flush to the, enclo the panel enclosure, so they take the cover off. Uh, so when I got there, the panel was on, but obviously the cover's off for a while, and they're just careful. So the dust gets in there, I like to clean it up when I can. So this is a QO panel that I'm working with here. So there's going to be a 100 amp main lug only, but it has a, it has a, uh, a main breaker in it. In the kitchen, it's a 32 circuit, I believe. And then down in the basement will be the 200 amp 42 circuit main lug only. So our main disconnect is the automatic transfer switch that we'll be installing in the next video. I gotta say, the QO panels really are nice and they're built well. Sometimes when you take out these um, knockouts from the breaker, from where the circuit breakers are gonna be coming through, uh, the knockouts, sometimes you weaken that panel cover. With the home line square D, I had that problem. And of course, the uh, mounting screws never lined up with, the, the male end of the screws never lined up with the female end of the, of the panel. So here I'm knocking out that main breaker that's in that 32 circuit panel in the kitchen. 
Uh, and the only reason why it has a main breaker is because that's what they put in. It could have been a main lug. I don't know what they did. So it is what it is. It's, it's really a sub panel. So there's a four wire going to it, which means our equipment grounding conductors and our grounded neutral conductors are isolated in this panel. And if you saw the way I did this knockout on this uh, main breaker here, this worked out really well because you can kind of screw up a panel and dent it if you're not careful. This one worked out just right. I just had a couple of KO seals. That one right there is three quarter inch and that one's half inch. And you'll see I'll just put in some uh, button connectors uh, to, to cover up those holes and not leave them like that. This panel uh, used to have all the circuits in the whole house in it. And uh, after we <clears throat> dismantled the old kitchen, we got rid of, rid of a lot of old circuits that were there. Everything in the kitchen, the hallway bathroom, uh, the master guest, master bathroom, the master bath, master bedroom suite, closet area, the all new circuits over there. Uh, but they all come from the new uh, main lug panel in the basement. Speaking of which, all those new circuits are required to be arc fault or GFCI protected. Uh, up to current 2020 NEC standards. So I get that question a lot in the comments. In this house, I'll be installing some arc fault circuit breakers. So like I said, this is a 100-year-old house. And so this basement has a lot of history, obviously. I don't know what's gone on in this house over the years. Uh, but there's some, some pumps in here, so maybe there's a, been some water. I checked with the building department. We are not in a flood zone. And if you were to see the location from a map, you would see, how could you be not be in a flood location? Uh, so, but I checked with the building department. We are not in a flood location here. So I guess some water. I'm not sure how it gets in there, but there's some pumps. I haven't seen water in that basement since I've been working there. And, uh, but the pumps were here when they bought the house. So anyhow. So what I'm doing here is I'm just finding the middle of that board and then I'm going to draw a straight line so I could put the panel directly in the middle of this board. So the work is done in a workmanlike manner. I think that's pretty important. Uh, so I'm using the 24 foot, 24 inch box level here just to draw a straight line. So I have a point of reference when I go to hang the panel. This is a 200 amp main lug only 42 circuit panel by Square D QO. Pretty good, huh? Pretty close to that line, right where I wanted. Probably just have to lower this panel down just a little bit. Lower this down so we can get our connector right where we want it. A little bit lower than this line, which is fine. We'll lower the panel and we'll adjust that line once the PVC comes through. Okay guys, this is a two and nine sixteenths coring bit. It's large enough to fit the two inch conduit with a little bit of play so you can get your conduit and the conduit fittings in the right spot exactly where you want them. That's why it's a little bit larger than the two inch conduit. Not bad. 
bad. There you go. Now we're through. Okay, so obviously I drilled that hole and I forgot to turn the camera on. It was just like I did on the outside, right. so it's just drilling a hole. That's what I mean. Is it so now I've brought my PVC through, and you can see I'm going to lower the panel here. And the reason why I want to lower that panel is when I bring my conductors into this enclosure, I don't want the neutral bus there to be in the way uh, of the conductors coming in. So at this point where it's at right there, I'm going to draw a hole with a pencil, or I'm going to draw where I'm going to make my hole with a pencil. And then I'm going to come back with a carbide drill bit from Greenlee, and make my two inch hole to get my two inch male adapter in place so that I'm ready to uh, bring my conductors in when that time comes. The National Electric Code requires plastic bushings on male adapters and connectors for conductors that are larger than number four American wire gauge. Inspectors definitely look for this and you don't want to fail for something like that because then you'll have to pull your conductors back out to put your plastic bushing on. So put your plastic bushing on before you pull your conductors. I'll tell you, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to patch around here, patch around the outside. And I'll be ready to pull the feeders. Let me do the rest of the service. And the reason why I say feeders is because that's exactly what they are. So this is no longer technically service equipment. Uh, these, this is actually a main lug only panel, like a sub panel. So these get what's known as feeders, and there's four conductors. There'll be there'll be uh, three ungrounded conductors that are sized for two watt copper, and the other equipment grounding conductor will be number four American wire gauge. I'm using hydraulic concrete, it is a leak preventer and I'm just going to patch up around the hole that I made in the cinder block around my PVC conduit so no snow or water or any kind of rain gets into that hole. And before I apply the hydraulic concrete, I just want to get the area around that hole wet so that the concrete adheres to the wall better. My next order of business for this day was to get the rest of these uh, circuits inside this new panel. As you can see, most of them are 20 amp yellow cable circuits, and they come from the kitchen. I think there are maybe five or six different circuits for the kitchen. You've got two small appliance circuits that are required. There's a microwave circuit. There's a dishwasher circuit. There's a circuit just for the exhaust fan. 
and then we got a couple of GFCI dedicated circuits for each of the two bathrooms a couple of lighting circuits and that makes up the panel here everything in here is going to have to be arc fault circuit breakers in this panel but uh, we're not going to put those in yet because we're not going to be energizing this panel for at least another couple weeks uh, but we're trying to wrap this job up before Memorial Day and before the summer starts so that this owner can have his house back and uh, revel in all the improvements that have been made to the house. This will be good. I hope he invites me over for a barbecue sometime because that would be uh, awesome. <laughs> You can see here why I wanted to get the male adapter, that PVC that's coming into the upper left-hand corner there. Why I wanted it where I wanted it. You can see the two main lugs that'll supply the bus bar. The neutral's right up above it. And then, of course, the four-wire. Uh, so the equipment granite conductor is going to go on that terminal bar that I installed previously on the right-hand side, right behind where my right hand is there. So that's why we wanted to get that. We wanted to lower the panel and get that PVC male adapter entrance and the spot will make it easy uh, without too many bends, without a sharp bend uh, into those lugs.